Blizzard is using AI to upscale all World of Warcraft assets. Well, I feel like that's not news. Like, I might be wrong about this, but I mean, I covered this like a year ago, maybe a year and a half ago, when Bobby Kotick was the first person to actually say that they're investing quite heavily into their own AI to basically do exactly this. I have been patient. I have been crying. I have been waiting, but you are not yet subscribed. Why? Subscribe. Are you ready for the old world revamp that none, nobody wanted, but we're getting anyway? Yep. Look at this logo. The Blizzard Entertainment logo here. Mm. Anything look a bit funky about it? You've thrown that through. Ah, uh, see, that is one generated by an AI, but not upscaled by an AI. Well, yeah, a good upscaler shouldn't do that. Wait, what? <laughs> I didn't. I didn't make this. No way. <laughs> well, Wait, here does we it go. Make this? Remember the up-res graphic settings in yeah. the classic uh, Cata build? According to Marlin, this was a couple of days ago. Ninety-eight thousand up-res textures. Please stop doing that, computer. Doesn't replace the the, uh, the originals. So when it chips, the up res textures will likely be this option, which is from Mr. James Sutter. The little up the new up res graphics option. Yeah. I mean, I know a lot of people are gonna lose their minds over this, but I genuinely don't see why this would be a problem. This is what AI is good for, right? If you're gonna use AI for anything, making your own game look better through the use of AI and not having a bunch of artists have to sit there and redraw everything, because that is usually what would be required if you're going to do a major gaming overall from the ground up. You'd actually have to get all of the artists, all of the programmers, all of the engine guys involved in recreating the whole world from the ground up with the new and improved graphics. Whereas an AI can do that probably 10 times as fast and you don't have to sacrifice any development time. So I, I think this is a good use of AI. So, are you ready to see what World of Warcraft is going to look like soon? Yeah. Look at how smooth that is. I'm, I'm totally happy with that. Oh, that wait, sorry. Good. This is uh, an affront to life itself. Yep. Look at this. Oh, definitely an affront. Yeah. Arr, I'm angry. Yeah, and some of you, because obviously See, you're watching looks, the stream... That looks good, man. Like, that looks good. I like it. Um, the thing is, this, this goes back to our conversation originally about AI. You're never going to be able to stop AI. The only thing you can do is try to make sure that AI is ethical. Right? You, you can't stop technology. Like, no one's going to stop technology. Because even if you successfully manage to stop all AI research in the West, do you think China and the Chinese government gives a shit about your protests and your, you know, boycotts of AI games? No, they're going to keep developing this shit. All you can do is, and this is ethical, Blizzard owns all of these assets. They made these assets. Now, you could come at me and say, but Aklon, think of all the artists that don't have work now because Blizzard is using AI. Yeah, just as all technology have pretty much always destroyed jobs. Do you think when the computer became basically commonplace in every single office in America, people didn't lose jobs? Like, think about the amount of people that were pretty much instantly replaced just by the computer. Because suddenly there's a whole bunch of jobs that aren't required anymore. Think about the copier, right? Just the copy machines. How many people do you think lost their jobs when copiers became an actual thing? Because there used to be an actual job called copier, right? Once the boss wrote a memo, that memo would go to the copiers and they would literally sit there and type that shit out for everyone, right? So that everyone actually had the, the, the copied thing. And then eventually they had technology that sort of, you know, you could just put the paper on and build like a thing, but that took a lot longer. And that was usually just for long form stuff. Most of the time, someone had to type that out. 
The second the copier became a thing, all of those jobs lost immediately. Technology will always replace jobs, but they almost always create more jobs as a result because even in those companies, now that you have a copier, production goes up, right? Uh, efficiency goes up. So now the company can do more things. The company needs more workers because they're doing more things. And so more people get jobs as a result of this. The same is going to be true for AI. And you're watching an ocean window and lost have it. You may not be able to exactly see the difference. You can see some cases. So but obviously this man's not, not changed, but very smooth. Huh? See, some things are good, some things are bad. Yeah. Like you see in this uh, image, right? Yeah. I think the pumpkins look uh, really good for what they are. Mm. But then the high levels of detail on the ground texture, those don't look that good. And yeah. one of the problems with the AI I think also before we start analyzing what the different screenshots look like, we may have to keep in mind that this is still early days. So I don't think this is the final product. I don't think this is the final polish either. Um, Blizzard will almost definitely move in. But again, we're talking about a video game that is very, very old. And I mean, would you mind running around in World of Warcraft if it looks like this? Like, are you really going to lose your mind as a result of this? I upscaling is you know everything will be upscaled but yeah. you know the way it's like depending on the size yeah. of the actual mm. texture how that's yeah. then applied in game some things may look higher resolution than others and then that really messes up how our brain perce uh, perceives like depth and a whole bunch yeah. of things like that so we do have a few before and afters for you because these are all afters from the thing right this is me today in stormwind on not in, not in classic on life. Is he, is Obviously not in classic. No, that's a guy, this is his name, like JSP warrior or, or something was just standing there. And then they cool. waved at me and left. Actually, um, see, he look. actually, Matt, yeah. that you've included him really makes your point. Have, I don't have an after for him, sadly. But yeah. I feel like you didn't have a choice to include him because that's just where he was. Yeah, I also didn't have a before for world. him, which would be challenging. But do you know what's amazing? Yeah. He looks like he's been photoshopped in from he a does. different game. Yeah, he does actually. And that is definitely one of the fears, right, uh, with upscaling. But this is, again, one of those stepping stones. AI isn't as good as it could be, but it can always be better, and it is going to get better. It's going to train. It's going to keep training, and it's going to keep learning. And as the Blizzard sort of refines their AI, eventually it will start spreading out. Like, dudes, I can tell you now, the speed with which we get content in World of Warcraft is actually going to increase significantly once the AI is fully trained. Because suddenly you'd be able to do dungeons in next to no time. Right? It, it, it'll take you no time to make a brand new dungeon from scratch. Because technically speaking, you just create a bunch of assets and you did because you made the expansion. And all you do is you tell the AI that you need these assets inside the dungeon and it will start developing it. It will paint everything in it will put everything where where you want it to be much much faster than what it is now because right now it's usually a lot more handcrafted like they have to physically go in and put everything up and make sure that it's all there someone has to make sure that everything is in place ai is going to take a lot of that shit just over and it's going to make sure that you don't have to waste as much time <clears throat> their english is so english he does <laughs> Not, you know, not to, uh, not to blow anyone's minds, yeah. but WoW looks a bit different now than, than you, back then. But I do want to say, it's often weird to me how people will say that World of Warcraft's engine is outdated and not good, but then look at the armor on the guy on the screen here and then compare it to the rest of the old world. That's how far we've come. The guy standing here with the armor is modern day retail wow. This shit in Stormwind was made, what, made, uh, updated in Cataclysm, really? Uh, the differences are staggering. Absolutely staggering. So, you know, um, <laughs> people that say the engine is, is old need to really go pay attention to the old world and see how far we've come. Baseball, how you doing, bro? <laughs> Do you know where he wouldn't look out of place? Or I both. In, Sorry. In this version of the auction house. Oh, wow. Dude, the level of detail. 
just take a look, right? So look at this. Look at the bottom here of the, the, the stones of the podium that they're standing on. Look at how f almost blurry it is. And then look at this. Like everything is in focus. It, it really pops at you. Dude, that is a significant, significant upscale. I think they just need to update some old models. I've been hoping for T2 Remake since like Kata, but even more since Legion. It'll probably happen. It'll probably happen. This looks good. Some bits of that do look pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. Obviously, it's literally a different auction house because it's from Classic. But you can see the extra detail. If, you, if the stream is showing you decent quality enough, you'll see the extra detail and clarity on like those textures. Whereas here yep. in the live game, the brew is shit. Yeah. And this is just Dragon Flight. Where are the shadows? Um, yeah, so this isn't actually the light. This isn't from the game. These, this are, is, these are unlit. These are unlit scenes. Okay. That, That's uh, actually the what most... I call is built that Steven made. Because yeah. it's not live in game. I, sh I okay. should have opened that. This the textures is applied, but not almost else. certainly the most important point before you see any yeah. of this. Uh, so you take a look at a game like uh, Halo Infinite, and of course, you know, we remember it got absolutely ravaged at E3. Ooh, the thing that did that was light. Mm. You know the face on Mars? Like, you know the face on Mars? Yeah. Uh, it's like a picture of a face on Mars. <laughs> well, very descriptive. Oh. Very descriptive. Uh, but, it, you know, it's a bunch of rocks, right? Mm. Uh, well, depending on who you ask. But... They've mm -hmm. flown over the same area with a more modern, uh, you know, more modern lander, you know, different lighting conditions. Mm -hmm. uh, not lander, sorry, uh, uh, orbiter. And uh, it doesn't look like a face at all. You can see how if you squinted your eyes and lowered the resolution, it would kind of begin to look like a face. But you look at it like, oh, that's clearly not a face. Because of, yes, the resolution, but also the lighting. Uh, mm -hmm. It is... Lighting, by the way, uh, I've spoken to a developer before about this. Lighting is everything. Like you, we have no idea as gamers how much time developers go into detail, how much time they spend just making sure the lighting works. Because our eyes are very good at picking up lighting differences. Uh, like if you see light, uh, for example, um, the mountain ranges near my house, right? Uh, where I live, just for reference, there's mountains literally all around me. From my backyard, I can see just this massive, massive mountain range. And it looks gorgeous. It looks absolutely breathtaking. When you take a picture of it on your mobile phone, it loses all of its beauty. Like It just looks like a mountain. Like There's nothing wow about it. And the reason for it is the mobile phone isn't capturing all of the different lighting arcs. It, it's, it's not capturing all of the depth, all of the, uh, and the depth is really, like when you look at the mountain when there's no clouds in the sky, and you look at the mountain when it's cloudy, it, it's two different vibes, right? Like completely different vibes that it creates. Queen Luna, how are you doing? Same with moons and stars. Yeah, lighting is so important. So even without lighting, Seeing these upscales is phenomenal. They're absolutely phenomenal. Why, you know, think about like, you see those big professional photo shoots, like, you know, sort of contribute to sort of people's body image being a bit funky, or at least, you know, that was the discourse back in the day. Now I suppose it's Instagram. Like the thing that's one of the most important things is lighting. Uh, as an what did you think of Hogwarts Legacy? And I, I've never played Red Dead 1, but Red Dead 2 is phenomenal. An example, you know, no matter, I mean, we've... So any pro camera, it does not matter how good your camera is if your lighting's bad. Lighting right. just absolutely changes and means everything in something like this. Yeah, it's, uh, any anyone who goes to the gym regularly very much knows that. Yeah. Because uh, you're like, ah, there is me in the mirror <laughs> in my bedroom. Oh my God, I am a sludge man. Queen, uh, I'm the same. Hey, when I played Hogwarts Legacy... All I cared about was playing evil. Like, I couldn't give two fucks about being a good wizard. How Slytherin, let's get all the curses. Let's just kill everything on the map. <laughs> I'm a little told that, though, that you couldn't play evil. I, I, I wanted to be, like, a super evil wizard dude that just kills everyone, but 
the game won't let you. It was quite jarring when in Cathasm units and terrain assets clashed when a side of old stuff. Yeah, but that's going to happen, and hopefully the AI helps, right? Hopefully the AI helps with that. Hopefully the AI can actually, because again, even with Kata, because you have limited artists, and each of these artists have a limited amount of time, you have to choose the most important things that you're going to be updating, and then just leave that, right? Leave everything else, because you don't have time to update everything. Uh, and that, that's what happened in Kata. You would see and this happened, actually, the, the thing that was most noticeable in Kata was usually going from one zone to the other. Like, you would get the redone zones, right? So the, the beautiful zones. And then you would go over to one of the older zones, and you'd be like, the fuck is this? Uh, this is wild. Everything feels a little weird. You go, I am a, there's the mirror in my bathroom. Oh, holy shit, I look great. All right, cool. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that works. Oh, I'll well, have to experiment with lightning then. Yeah. So that that is basically just to say this mm. is inherently an extremely okay. If you like, if you have that knowledge and you're just looking at the texture, totally fair and good. And I am absolutely not accusing Steven of anything improper here. No, this is, no, like this is literally um, him just putting textures in a scene to show off the texture. Yeah, for the crack, like yeah. And I'm really glad he did it. It's yeah. really cool. And when I look at those some of those textures, I actually think that they're in some cases like obviously not everything's great but many yeah. are a big w yeah it's it's kind of hard to see here but like just because of like the, the wideness of the shot and how not close it is in still a lot looks of cases, really good this though. is like the the mage quarter did not look like this in classic it did not no. look this clean but that still looks like the mage quarter to me yeah that looks like how i remember it yeah and this is it on live obviously it's lit and there's a what is interesting to me and it, it is truly one of the biggest phenomena that I have no explanation for. I should probably look into it at some point. Like, why psychologically does this happen? Or maybe one of you know. But I remember playing Baldur's Gate 1. You know, I was eight or nine years old, right? So I was a little boy. And I thought the graphics looked phenomenal. Like, I genuinely thought this was the most beautiful game I'd ever seen in my life. Um, I mean, you go back to it now, and it is, dude, it looks so bad. They it looks so, so bad. I, it's still a great game, right? The the dialogue is, is phenomenal. The, the the gameplay is phenomenal. But it, it is it, it looks just bad. It, it really doesn't look as I remember it. Why is that? Why? So Crisis. Crisis is a great example of this as well. When Crisis first came out, people were everywhere said so this is the best graphics can ever be like there will never be and it looked real at the time you were like dude this is so close to reality it's nuts and then 10 15 years on you look at that same game and it's like dude we thought this was close to reality like what the f this is like nowhere near it like holy shit right how is this the game that pushed graphics cards to their absolute max that makes no sense. Um, it's just, it, it really is wild to me. I want to be an evil bastard and kill muggles. Queen Luna, you and me both. If you figure out how to do that, let me know. I'll help. So should Sage. I don't know, but I've always preferred the older graphics to new. Vanilla WoW, EverQuest, Online Adventures, PS2, etc. There's a cutoff for me. I don't mind old graphics, right? I can play games that have bad graphics and it's not really that big of a problem for me, but there is a cutoff. There is a point at which the graphics are so bad that I, I, it actually removes me from the game. There's just, I can't get myself to really care about the game. The other way around for me when revisiting Diablo 2 in 2019. Yeah, but Diablo is again super stylized, which is immediately going to make a big difference. Stylized games just tend to hold their value a lot longer, whereas more realistic looking games or games at least that try to go for realism they're the ones that you generally notice the the, uh, the quickest oh shit this is really aged fucker there but you can see but i'm not talking about the i'm talking about why at the time were we convinced that this is the gr best graphics will ever be because i remember talking to one of my friends and i was like dude this is insane 
And he still said to me, I don't think we can ever get closer to reality than this. Th this is the best graphics I've ever seen in a game. And now you look at it and you go, wait, what? Because you have games like Cyberpunk. And I mean, Cyberpunk shits on any game that was made anywhere. Like, actually, Cyberpunk just shits on every game. There is no game that looks anywhere near as good as Cyberpunk, not even Red Dead Redemption 2, and Red Dead Redemption 2 looks phenomenal. It is a gorgeous game. Now my question to you guys are, right, or is, in 10 years from now, are we going to look back at Cyberpunk and at Red Dead Redemption and think, really? We thought this was good graphics? Like, holy shit. The graphics we have today is just so much better. Or are we pretty much at the precipice? Or, or, or are we pretty much at the peak? So from here, the only graphics that can actually look better is just absolute realism. So there, there is no... Th there's no increase in graphics from here that is still gaming graphics. The only thing up now is like actual realistic footage of whatever it is how much blurrier everything yeah. is when you look in at any like look at the state of some of the like, stuff i like, have absolutely comparatively i have absolutely no problem with yeah like say that comparison stephen made mm -hmm. once that's lit decently should all be good mm -hmm. now the thing is like any process that is being applied to like what ninety eight thousand assets yeah you're going to have some issues somewhere, probably. Yeah, so obviously, uh, oh, that tweet just didn't embed. Sweet. Uh, will Twitter show us this without logging in or not? Uh, it won't. Cool. Uh, fuck us, I guess. Um, did it show us any of this? Hang on. I will follow oh, it. I, I think I'm logged in on this laptop. Sweet. I try to be logged in onto yeah. the bird Just because there's a thousand billion things. Um, it's the bottom one from Marlon. Yeah, Marlon, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Can I just... This instead. There isn't an image, or do you mean the images in his uh, in his, in his, in his follow-ups? Yeah, yeah. Because he has uh, he has a couple examples of like straight text comparisons, which will be good to see. And obviously, the, one of the reasons is you know this the top of this thing. Show yeah, us you, oh, you're not this abomination. Me. Yeah, this abomination of like Blizzard. I don't know why. I don't know if that is purposefully written in, but even on Photoshop, if you try to... Like, I can actually show you guys this. Um, like, let's, let's load uh, Photoshop beta here. Um, and let's just do... I'll do one of my thumbnails, because, you know, it's the easiest. Um... Uh, let's go for, okay, let's go for this one, right? So let's say, for example, I wanted to do this, yeah? So now I go highlight this, generate the full, generate. Take a look at what, uh, what AI does with text. I don't know why, but AI and text is a fucking nightmare, bro. It does not want to do text. <clears throat> if you look at that. Can you guys see? Look at what it does with text. <laughs> it, it just jumbles it. Uh, it is... No matter what you do, you, you cannot get AI to do text it will not uh, include text now i don't know if that's written that way if that is how they make it or yeah look at the bottom there look at that shit at the bottom it, it's like the ai knows that there are letters there and so it tries to mimic the letters but it doesn't know how to mimic. the only thing i can think of is copyright stuff right so they don't want because you can know that people will take, for example, the official Coca-Cola uh, logo 
and slap that on something that they're not supposed to or the official Pepsi logo. Maybe that's why. So they've purposefully designed it so that it can't do any of these things. I don't know. It's just, it's truly wild to me. <clears throat> truly, truly wild to me. Anyways, let's get back into it. Someone called it something that was very funny. But you can see it, that's not, those aren't letters, basically. And look at the state of, like, how messy the job is of that. It's not done perfect in some scenarios, that's for sure. That's for sure. Ah, hello, keyboard, keyboard turner. These are mostly okay, but they need more work in the armor textures, upscale them after assembling the textures, then split the texture back up. Yeah, ah. so that's why this is uh, in the beta builds and is uh, not there yet and doesn't work. I'm <laughs> assuming because there's plenty of... Um, it looks plenty good. of stuff to go just yet. It uh, looks really good. But as like I'm trying to think of this from the like the, the principle of it. As opposed to like wearing the details, which will happen later. I think if they um what do you call if stuff like this just looks enough better under lighting, then what it will do is go a whole way to make the general like so much of the experience just a little better. Without yeah. looking worse and Light can be done with AI as well. ArcDX lighting is already a thing. So AI can already do lighting. I would not be surprised if Blizzard literally just runs this through AI lighting as well. Different fonts used in ads could ruin a bit of the effectiveness of the training data in that regard, maybe. Like, yeah, that's also possible. I didn't even think of that, Charlie, but that is definitely possible. Because one of the things World of Warcraft's always worked well with is that its art direction has historically been very good realistically it looks great for its time even like going yep. around classic now looks great uh, this yeah. just looks like they applied a super eagle filter like a snare simulator the thing about classic is even going through the old look of classic wow it absolutely is convincing that this could have been a game that came out this year it is so heavily stylized that it doesn't look like it was long, like it was released two decades ago. You could absolutely see games that launch today that will look like that, and people will still play it and love it. Uh, that, that's one of the key things I think that that's just genius by Blizzard, and it shows the genius of Blizzard from the beginning, deciding to go with heavily stylized graphics, because as you see now, it is absolutely timeless. It's nowhere near as bad as that. They've done a surprisingly good job of of preserving detail and stuff. Because there's a case... Huh. Of... I, I, I googled Super Eagle Bro. and I've got the results for the Nigeria national football team. Bro, let me show you... Uh, they can't see this just yet, but let me show you... Um, let me show you something. Huh? I will show this to the class as well. What is Super... Uh, apparently Super Eagle is like... Super Eagle is one of the filters in one of the SNES uh, Um It's also the name of the Nigeria national football team. Yeah, so... <laughs> All right, Google. Really? So, can they see this uh, now? Not just yet. I'm trying to find the good version. Um, okay, here we go. Um, look at uh, this is Grandia, uh, ninety seven uh, versus HD. I don't know what this is. Uh, let's just play through it. Uh, let's just play, please. But I, I mean, let's see if I can find some close up shots. Graphically, it uh, does look much better. Look at the absolute state of that. So I can see that, but they can't. Yeah, they, they can. Now. Oh, they can. Look now. at okay, the cool. absolute state of how blurry and shitty. Uh -oh. the, and they're just applied through a filter. Like, I mean, it that, still looks better than what it did. Is this a filter or like what's the what's the implementation? Uh, I actually don't know the implementation specifically, okay. but they just went. How do we make this? How do we make this HD? Let's apply a dog shit filter to upscale See, and smooth out our textures. In, in, in the future, in it the is future. actual soul versus soulless. Yeah. I mean, actually, have you have you heard a lot of what Jensen's been talking about? No. Oh, I mean, yeah, NVIDIA obviously are yeah. going fairly hard. Uh, one of the ways to see this is that, like, a lot of the... A yeah, basically, AI compute, imagine it as, like, mm. digital oil. Yeah. I'm pretty sure the digital oil analogy has been used yeah. for like, many grifts and schemes. Look at, but look at this lack of soul. Oh, obviously, yeah. there's some, like, extra work we've done there. Looks and fine, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, just filtered. But Actually, funny, I mean, on the topic I wouldn't be angry playing that. A, a bunch of mod tools. I forget yeah. the name of it. And some of yeah. the things that people have done with those NVIDIA mod tools that have some built-in AI upscaling are really impressive. Yeah. Um, but that's basically like NVIDIA's magic, like, I don't know, going in and 
<laughs> massaging things. I don't understand it. <laughs> whoever, whoever, like scored those things onto the ground really need to get their lines straight. Look at the state of the ones on the right. Yeah, <laughs> they look like my lines. Jesus Christ. Same. So fair to say. <laughs> well, okay. Number <laughs> one, the cut of it, like. this being done to pixel art is substantially worse. Yeah. Uh, to Honestly. copy words of a very smart man, an affront to life itself. Yeah. Because it is like so... <laughs> Missing water is HD remaster exclusive. <laughs> but it's it's also like... But yeah. Oh, it's just, it's wrong. And... I love how he's just having the time of his life laughing at this and I'm looking at it going, look all right. <laughs> I don't have a problem with that. So many levels and also it's pixel art. Uh, typically yeah. back then was designed for display on a CRT. Yeah. Uh, so that's that's a display of Don't like do the Twitter clap thing. <laughs> that's a display of like the worst possibility. And there's a little bit here where uh, like Stephen has a has an example where it, it when it comes to like a very good detail on a small scale, it goes a little bit wrong. Mm -hmm. You just can't you can't replicate detail all that well. I think they have done. But for repeated detail you can do a good job. Bob Zara, how you doing, bro? Good job. Yeah. And I hope the implementation goes well. Uh, you know, uh, we tool use is what we do as humans, and I think this is a good example of tool use. Yeah, it's Let a me, weird way to put it. But one I, I don't yeah, think sure. that this feels tremendously like this. Does not look like some cold, cynical thing. Do you know what this looks like? It looks like an engineer got excited about something they could do, and they went and talked to their lead, and now it can be a feature. Yeah. It, th this feels yeah. reasonable. It feels respectful. Um, I suppose it is interesting, just given the gaming is littered. I, re I remember the Assassin's Creed, was it 3 or whatever? Rema no. Well, yeah, it was the Assassin's Creed remasters mm -hmm. for the Ezio stuff. And it's like the lighting, just things don't look good. And that is an example of like whenever a thing is farmed mm -hmm. out to a third-party studio and it's just not fair. You look at the Grand Theft Auto. Well, it's it's not just that. It's that for many gaming companies, uh remasters isn't so much about trying to preserve the history of their game but rather just making more money right uh whereas if you think about world of warcraft the world of warcraft technically what we have with classic is just while well remastered right that's all they're doing they're just remastering it making it beautiful and sort of bringing it up to date but they don't charge money for that right? they don't sell those games again so they don't have that initial financial incentive to just push it out so that people will buy it. And who gives a shit if it doesn't look absolutely picture perfect? It's at least better than what it used to look. Their whole shtick here is that this is an actual this is actually a viable business model, right? It, it like we've seen the success of Classic WoW and how many people are playing it currently. So for Blizzard, this is an actual business thing. So they are going to spend, I think, a lot more time and effort uh, other than just, you know, throwing it into an AI and having the AI upscale. Uh, you, you'll almost definitely see Blizzard put a lot more effort into it because this is their business model. This is a viable new game, effectively. Uh, remakes. And... I, I mean, I have so much empathy for the developers who are behind the GTA remakes. Like, they were pretty awful, um, but it wasn't their fault. Like they were, I look, you know, we looked at the size, of, we did a report on it and we looked at the size of their team. We looked at just everything <laughs> they had to work with. And it's like, is this a bad result? Yes. Is it kind of commendable given the conditions? Yeah. You know, so uh, I don't know, this, this doesn't look soulless to uh, me. No, it doesn't at all. I was using that in comparison for how bad it could be basically. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there is an example here, which I think is quite nice, which is an NPC, just a camera. Just so like you get a maybe a better vision of what it kind of looks like the minute the textures on a model, so maybe one fifty one fifty is about fine. You can see there's clearly a lot of blur on him over the place. There's a lot of like what looks to, what looks kind of like color banding under that lighting there, and then you see him fresh, and some of the lines don't exactly add up. But he just isn't a blurry boy. He well he himself is a blurry boy, but yeah, armor. And I love how there. we're not Which seeing is anything. Nice. So <laughs> that's uh, that's your old world revamp. Which isn't an old world revamp. It's literally just they're going to make the game look better asterisk in the vast majority of cases. That is a revamp. Actually, if it if they deem to ship it and also yeah. deem to put port it to because at this point, I don't think that's what's going to kill uh, Cataclysm. I said it before and I'll say it again. I don't know if Cataclysm Classic is going to sell. 
Now, that being said, Cataclysm is one of the most cut expansions we ever had. Right? Th there is a shit ton of cut content within Cataclysm. Now, if Blizzard really wants to make Cataclysm pop, they do Season of Discovery, but like a classic Cataclysm version of it, where a lot of that cut content is being brought back into the game. And, you know, the game is actually now being fully fleshed out as a Cataclysm, uh, like the full Cataclysm experience. That could probably make Cataclysm sell like crazy. Like a lot of people will go back to play some of the cut content. There's cut raids in there. There's cut dungeons in there. There's entire zones that got cut out because Blizzard just didn't have time to finish them. That I could see work. But if Blizzard is just going to go with, you know, the same old, here you go, this is just another classic version. I think we've, we've kind of seen the results of this. Uh, the most successful classic version is classic, right? Everyone keeps playing classic. Blizzard comes out, they bring TBC classic out. Some people start playing TBC classic, but most people still play classic. Then they bring out uh, Wrath of the Lich King. It's successful for a little bit, and then people go back to Classic, right? Because Classic is the experience, I think, that most people wanted from the Classic experience. And I think the same is going to happen for Cataclysm. It's just going to be another one of those. People will probably play it for a bit, level to max, and do some of the raids and dungeons. But then they'll go back to the Classic experience, the one that they actually wanted from the beginning. Our executives get rich by making poor decisions. Video is up by Second Wind. Pringles, yeah, we can react to that. Point, I imagine you'd be porting this to like 11.1 or maybe 11.0 if you're going fast enough, as opposed to you're not going, this isn't going to go into the beta build and then go straight to live on uh, live on modern. But yeah, but hell yeah. That's us. Yeah, Z Vengeance, obviously. But Season of Discovery is based on, um, is based on classic classic. Right, the original classic just now with a bunch of new content. And that's why it's so so successful. Because what people always wanted was that old classic experience that they used to have, but then got removed as time went on and the game sort of got more refined. The classic experience was left by the wayside. Um and every single time Blizzard have brought out a new expansion, you see like if Blizzard, for example, announced Season of Discovery but Wrath of the Lich King edition. I don't know if it would have been as successful because in Wrath of the Lich King, a lot of the RPG elements that World of Warcraft used to have was already removed. Leveling was already much easier, uh, much more streamlined. Most of the difficulty in the world was already being addressed to make sure that you could pretty easily swap and, and go through most things. Uh, as, a, as a warlock in Wrath of the Lich King, you could already solo most things while leveling. So... Fundamentally, I don't know if it would have been nearly as successful because what people crave is that old classic experience. Um, uh, and I don't think that is going to change.